Hey, hey. We are looking at Hebrews, and we're in chapter 5. We're going to go through verse chapter 5, 11, into chapter 6, verse 12. So here we go, 5, 11, through 6, 12. And it says, We have much to say about this, but it is hard to explain because you are slow to learn. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's Word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Therefore, let us leave the elementary teachings about Christ and go on to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death, and of faith in God, instruction about baptisms, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal punishment, and God permitting we will do so. It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the Word of God and the power of the coming age, if they fall away to be brought back to repentance because to their loss they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting Him to public disgrace. Land that drinks in the rain often falling on it and that produces a crop useful for those uh, for whom it is farmed receives the blessing of God. But land that produces thorns and thistles is worthless and in danger of being cursed. In the end, it will be burned. Even though we speak like this, dear friends, we are confident of better things in your case, things that accompany salvation. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown Him as you have helped His people and continue to help them. We want each of you to show this same diligence to the very end in order to make your hope sure. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. All right, so pretty big chunk. Uh, we go from, uh, you know, some encouraging sections of Scripture kind of surrounding this one to this chunk which is a pretty harsh, you know, uh, 5.11. We have much to say about this, but it is hard to explain because you are slow to learn. In the updated NIV from 2011, uh, it says something along the lines of, you know, you've quit trying to understand, you know, like it puts an intention onto it, like we're trying to explain this to you, but you refuse to even pay attention. You're not even trying to understand. Uh, and that's pretty harsh, you know. And verse 12 has the word ought in it, and that means, you know, you ought to be doing this. You're failing to accomplish something you should be accomplishing. You ought to be like this, but you're not. Uh, and it's very strong. In fact, by this time, you ought to be teachers. You need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's Word all over again. So the author here is saying, look, you should be being productive citizens of the kingdom of God, but instead, you're not learning anything. You're not even trying to learn anything. And you, you, you need to be taught, you need to get, you need to start over. You know, you're, you're just not even, you're not even with it at all. Uh, it's a very frustrated language here. Uh, you should be helping, but you need us to help you. And that, you know, I think is a, a common theme in the scriptures as far as we're to be productive citizens for the kingdom of God. This is something that is it's you know it's throughout scripture and a huge emphasis in the new testament and the teachings of Christ of being a productive citizen in the kingdom of God we're to bear fruit for the kingdom of God you know every uh branch that does not bear fruit is cut off uh and the ones that do bear fruit are pruned so they'll be even more fruitful you've got uh you know the parable of the talents the parable of the minas you know there's all, just all kinds of things talking about Basically, we want to be, we're expected to be productive citizens in the kingdom of God. Each one of us has been given spiritual gifts, and God has a plan, and He's got things for us to do. And if we don't do those, we're failing, and it's very, very bad. So that ought is very powerful in verse 12 of chapter 5. 
And then there's this list of elementary teachings, which I think is just fantastic, because it talks about the things that we should have down, that we should go forward from, holding on to those, but advancing beyond just those. So these things, repentance from acts that lead to death, this could mean both um, you know, sinful activities, things that bring you down, other people down, or just dead religion, you know, just useless rituals. It could mean both of those. I think it might mean both. Uh, faith in God, <laughs> that's an elementary teaching, trusting God. Uh, instruction about baptisms, you know, being baptized in water, uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit, things of that nature. The laying on of hands, this is talking about advancing people in the faith, commissioning people, praying for people, the resurrection of the dead. There is eternal life uh, and eternal judgment. So there's the resurrection of the dead. We will all face God, and uh, there's two different options with that, eternal judgment. These are the basics that we're supposed to get beyond. And then uh, in the next few verses, uh, chapter 6, 4 through 8, is really, you know, some harsh stuff, kind of an expansion of that vine and the branches. You know, he cuts off every branch that bears no fruit. It's kind of an expansion of that through that uh, section there. Um, and it's just some pretty harsh, harsh stuff. Uh, and again, I, I don't know if I said it before, but as we go through the book of Hebrews, just like with, say, the book of Romans or any other section of Scripture, you don't want to just fixate on one verse and then build an entire theology around that. You want to get a bird's eye view of what's going on and then try to grasp the depth of the particular verse, but seeing it in the context of everything else. And this chunk of Hebrews is no exception to that. It's very important to grab hold of all of it. And one example would be uh, chapter 6 here, verse 11 that we read, which says, we want each of you to show the same diligence to the very end in order to make your hope sure. This makes it sound like, you know, if you're not, you know, working really, really hard to the very end, you could be out, you know, God could kick you out at any time, so make sure you're working super hard. Again, verse 11, we want each of you to show the same diligence to the very end in order to make your hope sure, indicating your hope is not sure. Unless you work really, really hard to the very end. Um, it's an important idea, but you have to fit it into the context of the grace of God and the security we have in Christ, which comes up in next time's devotion. It, you know, so it's very important to read all of these things in context. So don't go wild over verse 11, but hey, is it important for you to be devoted to the Lord to the very end? Yeah. It's very important. We need to last. We need to continue. It shouldn't put us in a place of feeling like our hope in Christ is unsure, um, but it should motivate us to stay diligent to the end. So how do we pray over this one? What I want to pray for uh, to close out this devotion is basically to have a growth mindset. It's very important for us. I don't care if you're 95 years old. Let's be learners. Let's be growing. Let's be becoming. Let's be advancing beyond the elementary into maturity. Let's have a growth mindset and understand this is God's plan for your life. Not that you stay stuck where you're at, but that you learn and grow and become and get better. That's God's plan for you. Just don't stay stuck. So I want to pray that we have a growth mindset and we don't slip into apparently what these people slipped into they didn't even want to hear it anymore. They didn't advance. They didn't even grab hold of the elementary teachings, let alone get to the place of teaching others. So we want to be growing in our faith. So let's play, pray for that. So Heavenly Father, I pray that you would give us a growth mindset, a spiritual growth mindset that today is as weak in the spirit as we will ever be because tomorrow will be a little bit better and next week will be a little bit better. And a year from now, we'll be quite a bit better. Lord, help us to be growing each day, growing in our reverent submission to you, growing in our understanding of the truth, growing in our ability to live for you each day and bring your truth to, to our own lives and to this world. So, Father, help us to see ourselves as people who are becoming and grabbing hold of the good things you've got for us. 
Give us a growth mindset, a spiritual growth mindset, not stuck, but growing. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.